I think we're about to see a lot of weakness, a lot of money being lost and uh, value depleting in a lot of asset classes. The equities market is kind of bullish still, but uh, I do think 2025 is going to be a very bearish year for the economy and for equities and for business owners and uh, individuals. So, or are we going to enter, I think, into a much longer multi-year bear market similar to the 2000 tech bubble? It took like, like three years of the stock market selling down and bleeding out and everything under pressure. And so that's, that's what I'm concerned about. Hello and welcome back to Soar Financially, a channel where we discuss the macro to understand the micro. My name is Kai Hoff and I'm the EdJR Mining Guy over on X and of course your host of this channel. And I'm looking forward to welcoming back Chris Vermoulin. He's the Chief Market Strategist over at the Technical Traders and somebody I've really enjoyed talking with because uh, he puts... Uh, what do you call it? Like he puts a fun foundation behind our theories, I I'd call it. And uh, it's always good to check in with him and see what the charts are telling us. Because theory is one thing, charts are a whole different ballgame. And we do have a lot of chart checking to do. Lots of big events uh, happened over the last 10 days that we need to follow up on. See how they reflect in the market. Of course, we need to talk about gold in particular. That's a big worry of mine. We need to see where, where gold is trending. Uh, and whether there's any momentum that could stop the downtrend right now. So I'm curious if there's any factors and anything Chris has to say that uh, might l leave me in a positive mood after our conversation. So um, one free way to support our channel is just by hitting that like and subscribe button. It helps us out tremendously, and we do appreciate that. Now, Chris, it is great to welcome, welcome you back on the channel. It's good to see you again. Thanks for making the time. Yeah, same guy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we need to catch up, Chris. A lot has happened. Uh, markets are going uh, haywire in all different directions. I think volatility has picked up a little bit. Um, the VIX, I just looked at the VIX before uh, uh, jo joining us or before jumping on here. And uh, help us understand a little bit. What, where's the market at right now? What, what are you seeing? Let's start at a very high level and then we'll get into some of the uh, specific charts here. Yeah, I'd say the equities markets from a really, really high level. Um, I think they're in kind of nosebleed territory. I've been I've been talking about I think we're gonna have a big market correction for quite a while. It just keeps getting dragged and kicked down the road. Uh, but I, I think we're seeing a lot of like kind of fundamental stuff kind of slowly breaking down. I, I Trump has re-energized things temporarily. I do feel like this little kind of bump is going to carry over into January. So I, I'm bullish on stocks. We're along the equities markets. Um, but overall, when you look at unemployment, it's it's starting to rise and kind of stalling. Uh, we're seeing de delinquencies on credit cards and mortgages are starting to default across commercial and residential. Uh, so things like that are starting to, you know, starting to build up the housing market. The, that bubble is about to burst. It, there's a million homes for sale. They're not selling. And eventually the bottom is going to fall through because in order to, for them to sell, people need to lower the pricing to what the new market value of homes are. So I think we're about to see a lot of weakness, a lot of money being lost and uh, value depleting in a lot of asset classes. The equities market is kind of bullish still, but uh, I do think 2025 is going to be a very bearish year for the economy and for equities and for business owners and uh, individuals. So I just think we're going to see that kind of really come around. It's a huge cycle, no matter what the Fed does with cutting rates or what Trump does, I don't think you can stop these massive like economic cycles. You might be able to stretch them and delay them, which is what the government tries to always do. But eventually that weight is going to come and that cycle will pull the markets down. I, I tend to agree. And I'm kind of curious, like where that false hope is coming from right now. Is it really uh, ju just a hope of easier like re requirements, regulations in the US, perhaps like it, it's risk off, like seemingly like we're at 6,000 points for the S&P 500 right now. So there's a lot of euphoria in the market. Bitcoin is exploding, which I sort of correlate with the tech trade. So I'm curious, like, where, where, where is that hope coming from? Where, where do you see that glimmer of hope that everybody seems to be attaching to? Yeah, well, I mean, everybody always wants the easy way out. It's easy to, it's, you know, people want to be positive. They just want to wish, hope the markets go higher. Nobody really wants to dwell and think about the markets going lower. So any little support or stimulus is going to make people more confident, want to move into things. Uh, and I, I obviously Trump is doing all, planning to do all kinds of stuff with taxes and um, efficiency plans and all that stuff, which is bullish, um, I think, for, for the United States to strengthen the country. Uh, it's bullish for business. So I think there's a lot of stuff moving the markets, which is why they've, they've had this strong pop. And definitely money's flowing into very aggressive sectors. We're seeing like, uh, lithium and uranium stocks have done well. Bitcoin is, is now taking off. Trump definitely favors the crypto space. 
Um, and, and so really it's just people are, are re-energized with the, this is a huge event. The, you know, the election was a very big, a big thing. And I think, um, Trump and Elon are going to really try to run the country a lot more like a business and actually like, you know, if you go bankrupt, <laughs> you, you, they don't want it to go bankrupt, although they already are, but they're trying to right the ship and, and slow it from sinking. So, um, that is a bullish sign for the economy. They're, they're trying to save it, make it better. Right. Yeah. Chris, I really want to cycle with you through some of the asset classes, um, just to, trying to understand like where, where things are headed. Um, I want to talk with you about the bond market, TLT, something I want to look at. Um, I mentioned S&P 500. Maybe we start there first. Um, just uh, if you, you want to share your screen probably, but uh, let me... Sure, yeah. Yeah, and uh, maybe we'll start with the S&P 500. A lot of my guests on the channel said, well, we, there might be a blow-off top and blow-off rally up to 6,100 points. We're getting... Mm -hmm awfully close to 6100 here and uh now i'm curious and let me bring that here to the stage um what what, what do you see here in the charts and uh, how, how much momentum is left and uh how, how much room is left to 6100 and it, are we even going to you know overshoot that target perhaps yeah i think there's quite a bit of upside potential i, I mean there's a few different ways you could look at the sp500 now i'm a technical trader so i just look at price action uh, but we can, we can look at a few a few different levels, and I like to use Fibonacci extensions, which I find are the most powerful tool to identify the next two upside targets for any asset class on any time frame. Uh, if we were to just take a look at the low that we saw back last, uh, a year ago in October uh, 2023, uh, or sorry, 2022, and uh, this correction that we have back here in, uh, in April, and we carry this forward, this, this is going to tell us to where that next upside target should be. Based on this first run in this first correction, typically if we go up to the 618 and have a pause or a pullback, which we had a, a very sharp one because of the, the more or less the uh, AI stocks had a very sharp correction. Uh, but once we hit this level and it recovers, we should go up to the next level, which is around 6179, uh, 60, 6200 more or less. So there is definitely some nice upside potential uh, based on this chart pattern. Um, it's not it's not huge percentage wise uh, to go here. It's only two, 3% more to the upside, but that is a, a very uh, easy move for it to do. I was actually talking to subscribers this morning, just talking about how this uh, chart pattern we're seeing is primed and ready that this week we could actually see a pop and move up to that level within really the next two or three trading sessions potentially. So there's quite a bit of momentum built up here where we had actually some panic selling yesterday in the stock market. Well, most people wouldn't really notice. Uh, all of our custom indicators were telling us people were panic selling yesterday. And uh, usually that's a sign that the market is about to, to move up. It's a contrarian indicator. Um, so I am expecting another leg higher. And, you know, when you look at the, you know, we can look at the NASDAQ after, but there's there's a lot of upside potential still left in, in the NASDAQ. I think we could see another eight. 13% to the upside in the NASDAQ, which uh, means the SP 500 will probably actually blow past this and keep on going. So um, I'm still bullish. This is a very bullish time of the market. Uh, and, uh, you know, it has a tailwind. So you just got to really ride this trend. Yeah, no, I agree. You got to play the momentum to a degree as well, mm -hmm. though. You're not a momentum trader, you're a technical trader, but uh, there's definitely a ton of momentum still in the in the in the main markets here, right? Yeah. Um, and anything you see, like when, when you say panic, panic selling, I think we might have to talk about that real quick. What, what do you see by that? What do you mean by that? Is that just a, a, a what do you call it, like explosion of liquidity, or like how does that reflect? Yeah, so I don't I don't have it uh, right here loaded right now. But uh, what I do is I follow the New York Stock Exchange up volume and down volume. I actually share it in my book, Technical Trading Mastery. Um, I actually share this whole strategy on how to identify short-term highs, short-term lows, how to trade a 30-minute chart. It's it's actually a really awesome momentum trading strategy because I do love momentum trading, but that's not my core focus right now. But if you follow the money flows in the New York Stock Exchange of uh, how many shares are getting hit on, hit on the bid, meaning people just are hitting a market order, they just get me out at any price, or how many people are doing a market order to get in saying I'll pay any price, just get me in. And so when a majority of shares are being bought at the ask and they don't care what price they pay, that I call FOMO. And usually the market is stalling out, it's everybody's just stampeding into the market. And usually we're gonna see a pause or pullback over the next day or two. Well, yesterday we saw the opposite. We saw everybody just hammering the sell button and ejecting out of the markets thinking the markets are gonna crash. And that's usually what happens when we hit these all time highs. There's really no reason for it, but people are so sensitive and so worried the markets are gonna correct 
that one little tiny bit of selling pressure that we had yesterday turns into everybody dumping shares. And when they dump the shares and the price of the market doesn't actually really fall, somebody's out there like catching all of those shares and accumulating. Um, because I think people see the smarter money says, hey, this is just, you know, a little wave of profit taking. It's a wave of panic. So that's how I, I gauge panic selling is just the New York Stock Exchange. The reason I use that volume is because it's called, you know, the big board. All the big brands are on there. And the average Joe, who's going to be an emotional trader, those are all the stocks they trade. It's all the ones that you, if you ask any random Joe, pick a stock, it's probably on the New York Stock Exchange because it's just one of the biggest stocks. And so those are the emotional shares we want to track. What are the emotional creatures doing? And then usually we can take the opposite side of that. No, I appreciate that. Thanks for clarifying that. It's always interesting to try to better understand uh, mentality uh, to a degree mm -hmm. as well. And uh, when you say yeah. panic selling, like it sounds like a crash is happening, but it was just a little blip uh, on, on the screen here, of course. So Yeah, um, yeah. And, and it's a really interesting level because when I see panic selling, the VIX could still be falling and going down. So people, they'll be like, there's no panic. The VIX isn't going up. But behind the scenes, if you lift the hood to the, the markets and you know what to look at, you'll be like, oh, there's a problem. <laughs> and it, you know, panic selling with this indicator is actually a bullish sign for us. So uh, yeah, it's, there's so many ways to look at the market once you uh, tear it apart and know what you're looking at. Talking about there is a problem and I'm looking at the 10 year bond yield right now. Um, and it's completely exploded to the upside for, for on the yield side. But of course, mm -hmm. the bond prices crashed or are crashing. Like we have, I think we, it's time to use that term looking at the yield chart alone. And uh, you, you have the TLT prepared for us. So we need to talk about the bond market a little bit like w what's in store for us? And uh, what, what can we expect from the from the bonds? And why are they behaving that way? Yeah, I mean, when, when we go and look at the big picture of bonds, we zoom way back here. Bonds have entered a massive bear market. They they peaked out during the COVID crash. Everybody piled in as a defensive safety play. And then we've been seeing rates go up. And of course, bonds have been coming down. Now, bonds are in, there's a very difficult, a couple of difficult stages for trading anything. Usually there's like a, a major topping phase, um, depending on how you want to gauge it. In these boxes, this is usually a very difficult time to try to um, make money from the markets. and. And there's also another stage where when something's in a kind of a bottoming phase, a stage one where it's kind of trading sideways, trying to figure out, you know, is the market bottoming or is this just a pause before it goes lower? These two stages are very difficult to trade. And I actually have this chart that I've showed uh, you. We showed your, your followers before. There's four stages to the markets. Stage three is red. That was the topping phase for bonds with the blow off phase. Very difficult to pull money out of. Uh, and then a stage one, which are these bottom, this bottom phase where you really just kind of want to steer clear as well. It's red because it's difficult to make money. It's random price action. What we want is a bull market or a bear market. And so if we go back to bonds, we're kind of still stuck in this bottoming formation. And yes, it's been a big pullback in bonds recently. But really, when you look at the chart, it's just a normal pullback based on the size of these, this chart pattern that it's formed. And people... Um, I think we're front running, piling into bonds, expecting rates to keep falling. Um, and, you know, at this point, they're not going to maybe fall qu quite as fast as people thought. And um, Trump's getting in, he's re-energizing. We've definitely been seeing money come out of the bond market. We've been seeing it come out of gold and it's been going into equities and it's been now going into Bitcoin. Um, and Bitcoin was kind of the most exciting trade we did last week. We got into Bitcoin last week because it was like an imminent break. I was like, this is like the one time like I'm getting into Bitcoin because it's going to like rally to 90 and then go to 112,000. Um, and so money right now doesn't want to be in bonds. And I think a lot of people are thinking the interest rates aren't going to go down nearly as fast as they think and people are pulling out. And uh, on top of that, they want to get into where the money is, which is the stock market. They want to make big returns. They're seeing all the ARK ETFs and a bunch of small cap stocks just explode in value and they have FOMO. They're, they're like, I don't want to be in boring bonds. They're going down and all the small caps are rallying 10, 20 percent. Um, so we're just seeing rotation out of this asset class into another. I do think bonds will be great potentially in 2025, um, but they have to get out of this base, this bottom stage one phase. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, what, what's the yield? Four point five percent, almost for the ten year. At, at one point, does it get interesting again? I think that's the big question mark, and uh, maybe that's a topic mm -hmm. for another discussion. Could because when, when's the incentive reached or the incentive price reached again for investors to pile back in? Maybe insurance companies and pension pension funds that need to start uh, adding to their uh, to, to show more uh, more returns potentially, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. 
you, you mentioned Bitcoin. I didn't want to go there, but uh, I've noticed some interesting trading action just today. Like I was, I was in the car. I was traveling today, and we're recording this fairly late at night my time. But when I looked at it, like Bitcoin was at ninety four thousand uh, dollars roughly, and now I'm looking at it again. We're at only at eighty nine thousand. The volatility seems insane um, in in Bitcoin right now. Maybe we can briefly talk about it. It's usually the focus of our channel, but I'm kind of curious um, what the price action is telling you here, um, Chris. Yeah, for, for sure. I'll try and make it really quick. But the long story short for Bitcoin, why I like it, I haven't bought Bitcoin in like 10 years. Uh, is the first time I bought it in a long time. But if we look at this monthly chart, it has a beautiful cup and handle formation. It's one of the strongest chart patterns that can be uh, generated. It also has this long rally up and this bull flag, which is another type of a bullish pattern. Uh, either way, it has a ver very strong chart. If we use that Fibonacci extension tool and just calculate this run up and all the way down to this uh, this corrective level, we can see where Bitcoin more or less should be going. And depending on where we go, generally, I like two kind of bars to kind of touch. Um, this will give us an, an idea of where Bitcoin should go. So 87,000 and then it should pause and chop around here for a little bit, which is what we're starting to see it. It ran up, blew through it. Now some sellers are coming in. And then I think we're going to go to this 108 all the way up to potentially 112 if we were to use, uh, actually this has to get extended down here a bit, um, uh, somewhere to this 112 area. So you can see we're at this 618. Now what this tool does is it just tells us the momentum of the price. So the momentum of here up based on Fibonacci, which is like in everything in planets and, and everything in the world pretty much, um, the 30, 61% of that move should happen again here. And then we have a pause and then it wants to go back up. So. I really like Bitcoin. We've already take some, taken some partial profits. We hit our first target here uh, a day or two ago, and now we're just gonna wait and let this continue that run. So I like it. And I, and the, the pullback you're seeing today is simply, it has run to this momentum level. And just based on Fibonacci, that's where it should run out of steam. That's where some sellers are gonna come in. That's where some profit taking is gonna come in. And so it's gonna run up with excitement, but then sellers are gonna kind of slowly put in some selling pressure and pull it back down. So. This is good. You actually want to see this little pause and pullback here because that means if we get a pause here for a few days or a couple of weeks, uh, then we're probably going up to 112 next. And okay. uh, that's uh, you know pretty pretty bullish price action. You used the term panic selling for, for the S&P 500 earlier, but you're not using it here. Is, is it, what, what's the main difference here, Chris? In terms of today's selling in, in yeah. Bitcoin, is that what you... Yeah, because um, we hit that new high, like 94,000, and then sellers came in, sort of like you, you, you mentioned, but you didn't use the term panic selling. I'm just wondering if there's a difference in selling behavior potentially. Yeah, so I would say, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to track uh, volume in Bitcoin. As crypto okay. is not my space so I, at all. But w what we saw here was simply it ran up. It ran up to this this level. The 90,000 was this key level that uh, my chart was saying, this pink orange line across here. And then there was just one more final push. And more or less, I wouldn't say it was panic selling in Bitcoin. I think it is just a wave of profit taking. And sometimes it doesn't happen right away. It might take a day or two. Um, and it's just, I think it's just people changing shares. So um, I don't see it as panic selling, but I don't really have a gauge to, to track how um, the crypto space is traded, like how it's being sold or anything like that. But to me, this is just, it's run out of momentum. And it's pulling back a little bit, taking a bit of a breather. Um, you know, you could, you could, we could call it panic selling, but really, to me, it's just it's run out of steam and it's just pulling back, taking a pause before I think taking another run up. No, no, f f fair enough. I just uh, curious, trying to clarify a little bit, and I understand it. Like, I'm not an expert on Bitcoin as well, so I don't need to grill you any further because I've. I have no qualified questions <laughs> after this. Like, um, let, let, let's move on. Like, one definitely benefactor from the you know the MAGA MAGA trend here is is the is the Dixie. We need to talk about the U.S. dollar before we get to the commodities, because um, I think the Dixie dictates or the dollar dictates where gold is going. So we need to set the stage a little bit before we jump to gold. Um, let, let, let's talk about it. Like, dollar's behavior is extremely strong. Um, it almost broke down below 100, um, and I think we might have talked around that time. I'm um, looking at the chart here um, that that the dollar wanted to break down, but it didn't. And now we're stronger than ever. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Like, what, what are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, the dollar has had a huge, a huge rally to the upside. It's right back to the upper end of this range. Um, 
I really like the dollar. I've liked the dollar for a long time. I hold my, my investment capital continue to strengthen the, I always like to look at the big, big zoom way out. Look at the big picture. If we look at the big picture of the dollar, um, it is more or less you know, a series of higher lows, a series of higher highs. You know, it stair steps its way up. I believe we're going to go back into the one twenties, potentially way up, you know, even higher, uh, similar. I believe we're in a very similar setup as we were back in 2000, 2001. Uh, in terms of, I think we're going to see fear in the market. We're going to see the market sell off. Um, who knows what Trump is going to do with their whole reorg and and, and uh, Elon kind of shaking things up in the government and trying to get rid of a bunch of different um, groups, I think, that are in there. And usually we see the market rally. During, during bear markets, we see the dollar rally, 2008, huge rally in the dollar percentage wise. I think we're going to see the same thing again. Uh, and so that's where we're at. Like the dollar is now at a short term resistance area. And if it breaks out, a big move up is going to put pressure on commodities where pricey gold and silver struggle. It will be a pretty major headwind. The crazy part is, is gold's had a beautiful run over the last couple of months. So has the dollar. Uh, they've been running together. And so it's uh, definitely interesting. But now I think the dollar is going to take the headwind or be a headwind for gold, uh, because if gold breaks out here and starts to, to run even higher, uh, it is starting the next major run up potentially to like 120, which will, you know, definitely probably mute. Uh, some of the upside in gold. K kind of difficult to put timeframes around it, of course, Chris, but uh, you, you mentioned earlier and uh, it sort of fits what I'm expecting, at least until mid-January will be, uh, as, at least in the gold space, we'll be seeing some headwinds, as you said, like because there's still a lot of uncertainty about the new U.S. president, of course, and uh, policies mm -hmm. here. Um, is, is that uh, what you're expecting in the in the Dixie as well, in the dollar, sort of like that time frame um, that it might trend up and then we'll, we'll see a decision um, like in terms of uh, what do you call it direction um, at, at that time? Is that something you would uh, subscribe yeah. to? Yeah, I, I believe I believe we're going to see um, like when we when we take a quick look here at the seasonality chart for the SP 500. Here we are, you know, coming in November here, middle of November. This is usually we're going to see a push up in equities. Trump is in. It's favorable for equities. So we definitely have a tailwind to push the markets higher. Seasonality wise, gold should also be going higher. Um, we're right now, I think we're just seeing money rotate out of gold and into equities and Bitcoin because gold has really hit that upper target um, that uh, you and I had talked about like a year ago or so. Um, and, and so money's just kind of rotating out of it. And when we look at the overall cycles for the market, this is this is major economic cycles, which I touched on at the very beginning as you and I were talking, these huge cycles at play that the, the governments, I don't think, can actually stop. In precious metals, gold tends to do very, very well. And so, as, as you were saying, I do think gold and miners are oversold. I think they're ready for a bounce and a rally. And this is a time that even if the stock market keeps going up, precious metals should, you know, rebound and recover and maybe go back up to the recent highs that the miners have had and gold has had, uh, because this is just a favorable time for them because there's uncertainty everywhere with currencies and the stock market bubble and housing and um, all kinds of stuff going on. Right. So um, there's a lot of things at play which, um, you know, I think is eventually going to send the dollar higher as well. Let's take a look at gold. And uh, I, I just came from the Precious Metal Summit. I saw Florian Gromus speak, um, or I heard, I spoke to Florian Gromus in the hallways, and he said, well, his target right now, 20, or what, what he thinks 2535 needs to hold uh, per, per ounce of gold. Uh, if, if that doesn't hold, we could see 2200 again. And uh, of course, that made me nervous, and I'm curious what uh, you're going yeah. to tell me here, Chris, and what your charts are telling you. Is that uh, is that sort of in sync with what you're you're thinking? Your chart analysis tells you as well, and uh, just yeah, we should we be nervous we about can it? Look at a couple different. Uh, a pullback in gold is an opportunity because uh, I believe long term we're going a whole lot further. Uh, higher to the upside. But uh, if we were to just kind of look at a retracement, so this is Fibonacci retracement saying it, it based on this huge run up, we had the first run, we had a bull flag in the second half. Um, there was another one that came from 2001 to this high and low. It comes at the same level. This is why gold's getting rejected right now. This is just two massive chart patterns colliding with the same target. And now some event is happening. We have an election and I think the economy is slowly starting to stall out here, but gold's pulling back. And so if we look at this Fibonacci retracement, this is telling us, it, you know, this is the sweet spot for where usually something wants to pull back to. This is potentially uh, 20, 2133 to about 1925. That is kind of based on this larger cycle. That is um, the pullback that could 
that could happen. That's kind of the more severe pullback. We can also look at the most recent rally and take a look at this smaller window of where that next box would be. And that is somewhere in this range right here, which is about 2350 down to about 2200. So these are those are the two boxes where we need to be aware that gold could pull down to. Now, keep in mind, this is the monthly chart. Uh, so overall, it could pull down here. And I believe gold will be more or less weak and out of favor till probably like late next year. So I would expect these bars to kind of drift down and put in a bottom or base, chop around. And then once I think the economy has a cleansing event and something triggers, I think gold, silver and miners will be off to the races. And that this pullback that will come down into this space is going to be the same as this pullback that we had right after the last financial crisis and gold took off for several years and, and miners this this was like the ultimate opportunity for anyone in the mining space to get into miners and so that's what i've been drooling about waiting for a financial reset gold silver miners will most likely get hit which is fine because it's going to reset the pricing and after that is like the last time to like you know get on the next train for a massive move where gold will, who knows how high it'll go, silver, 80, 120. I mean, I think there's gonna be some huge upside potential. But right now we're, we just had this multi-year consolidation where stocks and real estate took off, but now we've got this rally in gold. The whole world is getting nervous about everything. We had the same thing happen over here in 2007, 2006. We had a multi-year pause. Every asset class took off but gold. And then suddenly gold came out of nowhere because everybody got nervous of all the bubbles and then gold had that pullback. And so now we're just waiting for another one of these pullbacks. And while it'll be downward for stocks and miners, it is also gonna be a huge opportunity and um, to, to, to you know, re-enter or you know, accumulate even more once we see those kind of levels reached. You, you, you say like you're, it, they're oversold, the, the miners as well, but uh, after counters, like does it, were they ever overbought? Like the miners in particular, gold I can see is like yes, the, the the gold price ran up, but it feels like the miners are we're we're still lagging behind. Yes, we've seen price improvements like GDX ran sort of hand in hand with the gold price, but usually those indices like outperform gold one two to one three to one in general, and we haven't seen that outperformance that we usually see. Um, yeah. So the challenge is like why now? It's like why are you why are we right, getting the rug pulled out from under us just before it while while it just started. Yeah, well, I mean, miners are, are pretty noisy. Uh, we, we could argue there's a major top, a stage three topping phase in this range. Uh, you could one here or kind of in this area. We're, there was a kind of a major bottom basing phase down here, like a stage one. And we're still kind of building this really gnarly, volatile, you know, this kind of base. And miners did run up. They, they hit uh, some measured moves to the upside and now they're getting sold off. Uh, they're definitely underperforming. They're nowhere near all time highs and a lot of damage is being done to the gold chart right now. And I, yeah, I did say gold miners are oversold and I believe they are simply because they, they came down to support and then they broke it and they've moved the second half of that level. So now I believe they're down into an oversold territory, which is, um, draw a line across here, which is not very straight, but it is a <laughs> price support level. It's also a measured move. It's halfway, whatever this move was, when it breaks, you get the same cycle move to the downside. And uh, there's lots of volume. So people are panicking and they're dumping shares. They're, they're giving up on it. Uh, so all those things come into play. And that other cycle chart I showed you where precious metals are in favor, that means, you know, once the selling dissipates, I think we could see gold miners work themselves back up over the next couple of months into January. And the question is, I, I don't really know if it's going to break to new highs, but it might regain a good chunk of this. Uh, but then if we go into a market correction come late January and, and 2025 is a bad year for everything, um, you know, I believe they're going to break down and sell off in a big way again and reset. So uh, miners are still a trade. This is like you have to trade it. I, I don't believe you really want to hold them through the next correction. I think you want to try to make some money here and then potentially, you know, accumulate, uh, get back into that space more so once there's been a, a reset, if if that's the case. Now, We'll just have to see how they unfold. This is the, the nice thing about technical analysis is that it doesn't really matter what I think or, or, or say here uh, because we're not, we're not trying to predict what price is gonna do. What I do is I follow price. A trend changes direction, we change our position, we play that direction, um, or we just don't touch it if it's going in the wrong direction. So uh, we just really let the markets unfold, do what they're gonna do. And uh, you know, right now, I think the most bullish case for miners is like maybe a bit of a double top here over the next month and a half, two months, 
um, and kind of regain what they've recently lost. You're definitely playing with my emotions here, Chris. Um. <laughs> I know it's not a, it's not the most bullish side, but it will be come come in due time. No, it's like it's just like yay, oh, and then you're just yeah. like. Like, yay, we're seeing a rebound. It's like, yeah, no, they're going to crash hard after that. I was like, come on, Chris, come on. <laughs> like, uh, it's difficult not to shoot the messenger here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I know. No, no, it's like, I, I hear you. It's like, and, uh, it, it's interesting because that's sort of the feedback, like the emotional and uh, feedback I got in, in Zurich this week as well at the Precious Metals Conference. That euphoria we've seen maybe the last three months, two and a half months since uh, mid-September, since the first rate cut, sort of disappeared, I have to say. Like, it's uh, somebody let a bit of the air out of the balloon. And yeah. we're sort of in that, it almost feels like a consolidation phase. Um, yeah. Just just emotionally, I'm purely going off of sentiment that I've seen at the conference. There's zero technical uh, fact behind that, right? But that's sort of what my gut is telling me. And, uh, yeah. and uh, The gut is a powerful tool. It, <laughs> it really is. It's an interesting one, yeah. And it's, it's, it's funny enough, like it, it is right more often than wrong, and which is interesting. Yeah. You just got to listen to it properly and interpret it right. Um, you, you, you got the silver chart up and the silver miners. Um, let, let's talk silver, silver miners real quick before. Sure. Uh, last, last thing I want to talk to you about is copper, of course. But uh, since we had uh, gold first, silver next, and then copper last. But uh, what's silver telling you right now? Uh, silver is very much so the same as as the gold play when they, they are they're kind of all the same trade they just move volatility wise just you know one's more volatile than the other long story short we had a multi-year pause at the same time as gold silver then became a leader and went into a 65 percent correction we've had a multi-year pause in silver much more funky gnarly chart but we've had this rally up uh, silver did come right up to these highs here these highs that we've seen on this monthly chart multiple times we saw a low here so it is definitely you know kind of done what it i think it was supposed to do it's moved up and hit that level now it's getting rejected back down it, it might work its way back up like the miners and, and want to retest that 35 35 50 area over the next couple of months um, but overall i think it's going to be the same type of scenario where uh, it's gonna it's gonna struggle a little bit. It's gonna have some headwinds, especially if the dollar breaks out to the upside. Uh, that is gonna put more pressure on it. But again, once 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 we have this kind of correction in the markets and it resets somewhere back down into the twenties here, the the mid twenties, you know, then then we'll be off to the races. But uh, I do think this whole measured move for the precious metal space, you know, it's been unfolding since twenty nineteen, uh, from when it broke out of the last base. And so now they've both just as, as of last month, they both hit their their targets and now they're getting rejected. So now we have to kind of regroup, let the market confirm what's going on and, um, and, and create a pullback and find out where the bottom is. Once it changes direction, then we can project forward where the next upside target is, uh, which will be really exciting once that time comes. But until then, we got to let it paint more of a picture for us to actually be able to pull more out of the charts. No, fantastic. I know I appreciate that insight on, on, on silver. And uh, la last thing I want to talk to you about, Chris, is, is copper. Um, it, it moved really strongly based on China's stimulus. Then uh, the election happened and copper crashed. And it's not because of recession fears have subsided or anything. It's more tariff fears and what it will do to commodities, in my opinion. So I'm curious if, if you're seeing the same thing, the charts telling you the same thing. And uh, where, where do you see copper heading here, Chris? Yeah, I mean, copper, copper, I think, is trying to put in a pretty major top. This is the monthly chart. Um, it, you could argue there's huge, huge kind of topping phase. If it starts to break down below kind of there's you could you could draw a little support trend line. I'm not a huge fan of support trend lines, but if we start to break through this support trend line uh, on on this monthly chart, I like to draw a lot of short term lines. So wherever there's a standout pivot low on these charts, there's gonna be significant areas where there's gonna be sell orders where it's gonna create a wave of selling. And so once we break one of these blue lines from a, a previous low, um, it's gonna create a wave of sell orders and then it's going to create a free fall. And if you have one stacked close together, sometimes by breaking one support level, it triggers enough orders uh, and momentum to push it far enough and it could trigger the next one if it's close enough, which triggers even more panic and more selling. Um, and so I think when it unwinds, we could see a very big unwinding event. We could see it come down. I, I bet you we'll probably see uh, copper, I think, down to pierce this $3 mark, probably come down, pierce this low, flush the market out. This is, this is maybe like 2025 sometime where it'll cleanse itself out with the economy, 
and uh, and sell off. That's kind of what we've seen in the past. It is up in kind of nosebleed territory when we look at the pricing up here. And we tend to find, you know, after big cycles here, we do see very sharp pullbacks. And I think back to that 3, 315, 325 area um, is kind of in store. I think oil is going to have this uh, the same. I think oil is going to have quite a bit of weakness be into the mid 40s uh, in 2025. I think it'll be a uh, I think there's going to be a very big cleansing event, but it might be short lived. It's really hard to tell what this market is going to do. Obviously, nobody nobody knows, but it's either going to be a very sharp, abrupt reset again uh, that set, resets the entire economy um, a little differently, not like a COVID reset in terms of all kinds of uh, things going on there. But um, the big question is, are we going to have very sharp like liquidation sell off and the markets rebound and, and, and cleanse over within like a one year period? Or are we going to enter, I think, into a much longer multi-year bear market similar to the 2000 tech bubble? It took like it was like three years of the stock market selling down and bleeding out and everything under pressure. And so that's that's what I'm concerned about um, for like investors who are, you know, have the buy and hold strategy, because if it does that, people are going to be underwater for years and not making any money for years is bad. Being underwater and the stress of being down a lot is stressful. Um, so. Yeah. Anyways, it doesn't really quite tie into <laughs> copper, but I believe copper is going to have a headwind along with everything else. No, exactly. And then in crude oil, I'm looking at $68 right now as well. And so, so far, it's been supporting the economy and uh, mm -hmm. keeping inflation and everything in check uh, in, in the U.S., despite getting some higher inflation numbers um, from from the U.S. To, or out of the U.S. today as well. Um, yeah. it, it, interesting times. Absolutely. Uh, the charts are a bit all over the place. Quite inter it's, it, it is quite interesting what we're going through right now. We'll definitely have more clarity come uh, mid-January. Uh, it is getting, or the, the murky water is getting clearer by the day, I have to admit, uh, by we're seeing all the appointments, <laughs> political announcements. Um, it, it is getting interesting. And uh, can't, can't wait for it to be over, quite honestly. Can't wait for the inauguration to be done, and then uh, yeah. we, we can move on. Then we'll have some more yeah. clarity, and I think the charts will be a lot clearer as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Chris, um, f f as always, really appreciate your time. Thanks for making sense of what, what is happening in the markets right now from a technical and from a chart perspective. Uh, where can our viewers follow me, follow you and find sure, more yeah, of your they, content? Sure, yeah, they can follow me here on YouTube, The, the Technical Traders, uh, or go to my website, thetechnicaltraders.com, and... Uh, I share videos, draw the charts, share pretty much. I share what I'm trading with everybody who follows and uh, you just can, I ride the coattails of the market. You can ride my coattails of what I'm doing with my portfolio, my allocations. And uh, I keep it pretty simple. I just trade ETFs and have a couple of positions open at any given time. Fantastic. Chris, hugely appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming on back back here on SOAR Financially. We, we should chat uh, maybe right after, like January 21st. We should we should have a discussion and see w see where we're at. And uh, that's right the day after the inauguration. So uh, we'll, we'll figure it out together. And, Sounds uh, great, Kai. Appreciate I promise you not to shoot the messenger. So. <laughs> <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> Chris, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us here. And uh, everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, as a reminder, free way to support our channel is just by hitting that like and subscribe button. It helps us out tremendously. I understand it's volatile times out there right now, but uh, it's also interesting times. And uh, we've heard from other experts, buy the dip might be the right way to go for to a degree. Um, do dollar cost averaging is another way. We're definitely no trading advice from my end. Like I'm not a financial advisor, but it could be a valid strategy at this point. Solely limp in and build positions, but uh, don't don't go don't, don't get carried away. The euphoria is gone, especially in the miners right now. Uh, but we're still at high levels. The miners are making money and they're making a lot of free free cash, producing a lot of free cash flow right now, which has me excited. And uh, the balance sheets are clean. So. We'll, we'll carry on. We'll, we'll truck through this. We'll, we'll come out stronger on the other end. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back with lots more here on Sword Financial.